Can you really use AI for design and architecture? This is an image completely generated by AI. And this one. And this one. And also this one. I've been spending some time with Midjourney lately, trying to spark some new inspiration for my projects. It's actually where I'm finding AI to be a really game changer nowadays. I've got to admit, Midjourney can be really addictive it's super easy to lose track of time, creating a mountain of new images. But hey, I figured out the step-by-step -step method to get some really realistic images using AI, which will be perfect for using as references in architecture and design projects. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this is going to be a bit of a longer video, but trust me, it will be worth it. I'm super excited to share everything you need to know to really make the most of AI in your creative workflow and elevate your projects. All right, here's the game plan. We are kicking things off with Midjourney, where we will create, blend, and fine tune some images. Then I'll guide you through using ChatGPT for even more precise results. After that, we'll dive into using an image as a reference for 3D modeling. And to wrap it all up, I'll walk you through rendering it in Lumion software, where I'll share tips on tweaking the light settings, selecting materials and navigating the terrain tools and object library. So if all of this sounds good to you, buckle up and let's get started. So here I have mid journey. So we can start by saying imagine. So on this prompt, I'm going to start with something really, really simple so we can see the results. So let's say a house. And so now it generated these four images and they are all square, but we'll get into that later, how we can turn this instead of square, we can turn it into different aspect ratios. And as you can see, they are all with a fantasy theme, right? We just set a house and nothing else. So let's do a little bit different now. Let's say, instead of simply a house, let's put a modern house. I think that now it will not take into account this uh, um, fantasy theme to be a little bit different, but let's see what it can gather. Okay, and here I have the four images. And so a modern house, now it's completely different than that previous prompt, right? So we really see a modern house here. So let's try now to be a little bit more specific. I think that the first part of the image, it's usually what it's more important. And you need to kind of divide your prompt into several different things. If it's a modern house, if it's a classic home, then you can say elements that define your home, like the materials, for example, you know, what, what type of materials, it's made of concrete, it's made of wood. You can specify which elements the house has. Very tall windows, for example. So all of this, then the next part will be that it's like in nature, in a desert, in a forest, it can be in a suburban area, and you can define even what type of colors you want, bright colors, a warm mood, desaturated color tones. All of this will have an impact on the type of image that you will get. And later you can also say, a uh, name of an architect can be Cesar Vieira, for example, Kengo Kuma. All of this will play an important role in the specific style that you will get out of, the, out of these images. Since we got now this out of the way, let's try to be more specific. So for example, so let's say modern house made of concrete with, now I'm gonna say the part where it has that, that special feature. So with large, tall windows. And then for the setting, I'm going to say it's on a, on a pine forest. And actually I'm going to leave it like this. I'm not going to add the, which style of architecture I want for now. So I'm just going to leave it like this and let's see what style it will give us. Okay, so here's the final result. And as you can see, it has these large tall windows and it's made of concrete. So it's in a forest, a pine forest. And you can do other things, for example, in the style of the Adid, you will see that the result will be completely different. And so here's the results. So you can see that it looks completely different from what we had before. And again, if I were to generate a new image, for example, in this V1, and let's say that instead of on a pine forest, I'll say on a suburban area. And instead at sunset, I'm gonna say clear blue sky and here's the result and now if you are thinking that this will take over jobs of architects or even designers well if you notice every time i create something new 
it's something new. <laughs> I cannot change this, you know. I cannot change the type of glass. I cannot change the type of the curtain that it, it is here. Or if I want to an another view, usually the clients are asking for a lot of different views from the project, not just one single view. And I cannot have that with this specific one view that I have. I see this AI as a way to get references. It's very, very useful but not uh, a way to generate the whole project and that's it. So about that replacing jobs, <laughs> I still have my doubts. And so from this one, so let's say that uh, I like the first one, okay? So I'm just going to upscale it. And then you have more options when you upscale. So you can make variations. You can also do a zoom out. For example, if I create zoom out two times, what, what this will happen is that it will just, from that image, it will generate around it, okay? Or if you want, you can specify, as you can see here, you can specify a custom zoom, or if you want just to uh, extend to the left, to the right, up or down, okay? And so he here it is. As you can see, it zoomed out two times. So we have here all of this area, all of this area, it's completely new, okay? And it gives you a more context to our scene. So for example, I, I like this one here, all, all the landscape design, you can see how it's integrated in the same style, okay? The same architecture style. So now let's change a little bit. Let's say that we are starting uh, completely fresh with uh, an interior design project, let's say a kitchen. So what we'll do, I'll go here again, and I'll say white modern kitchen. And then I'll say with wood accents and uh, maybe some beige colors. It will be quite small, like 15 square meters. And uh, I'll say that says skyscrapers view and focal length 24 millimeters. For example, I'm starting to see already that it's generated with an island. I didn't specify that I want an island. You can make commands on mid-journey and erase certain parts of it. So the end result will not have that. But let's first see the results. So indeed we have some wood accents. It's a, we have white kitchen here, white, white kitchen, white kitchen, wood accents on the island. We have the skyscrapers view. This is nice. So even the lighting, it's quite soft, like more like the golden hour mood. It's quite nice, quite interesting. But let me show you that if you were to add here, no kitchen island. We will see if it will now give us some results without a kitchen island. And here we have it. Indeed, we don't have now the kitchen island. So if you want to remove specific things from uh, your prompt, from your, the, the final result on your image, you just need to add this dash dash no, and then specify what you want AI to not add on the final images. So, and you, and you can see that this is already a completely different result from the, Im the previous images, right? If we check with these ones, and if you compare with this, I would say that this actually looks more accurate to what I asked for a more like 15 square meters room. This is probably more accurate than this one that is that has a lot of space. Definitely, it's not 15 square meters. So, and there's also other things here. If you click settings, you see that I have here raw mode style. This means that all my scenes are visible to a public, okay? And then here, you can see I'm using the latest model. You can also go back to all these versions, but the, the latest one, it's the, for me at least, it's the best one, so. Uh, and I'm using style very high. What does it mean? It means that you give a prompt and it will be very creative to what, uh, what it will create. But if you were to be very specific, then probably you would want to use style low, okay? So in this case, this is, for example, where I would use chat GPT and you can just copy this text. And now on chat GPT, I'll go here to plugins. You can, with the version four, you can add plugins. I'm going to use this one photorealistic. And I'm just going to add here my prompt. And so this is starting to generate more detailed prompt for us to use in mid journey. And so here's our prompt. So create a 15 square meter modern kitchen scene with a white color scheme complemented by wood accents and beige tones. The kitchen should have modern amenities and fixtures with a clean and sleek design. The focal point of the image should be a large window revealing a view of skyscrapers. 
captured at a focal length of 24 mm to give a wide angle perspective of the bustling city outside. The lighting should be natural, highlighting the textures and colors in the room. So <laughs> it's a whole new thing comparing to what I just uh, wrote here. So I'm just going to copy this. Now I'll go back to mid-journey and I'll change this style to low. So now it will take into account more of my prompt and not be so creative. So let's see what will be the difference. So we have our islands back. I didn't specify that I didn't want any kitchen islands. So they are here back. You can see some difference in uh, results comparing to the first one. So, and you can see that the first one, it was more creative, adding a lot of different things here to the, to the image. As for the second one, I think it's a more clean version. As the, it mentioned, I think it was clean and slick design. So it looks more like a, a typical image that you would find to promoting a new apartment building, for example. Always pay attention to these details. You can use stylization if you want more creativity from the AI, or less if you don't want. But at the same time, I would recommend using this Shaped GPT plugin. It's called Photorealistic. And with this, you'll have a very detailed prompt for you to use. And now I want to show you another thing here. The same thing as we did with um, architecture style. You can do the same with architecture style for interiors as well. Let's say that I want this same image. Actually, I prefer this second one. I'm going to go here. White modern kitchen in the style of Zaha Adid. So we are adding th that in the beginning of the prompt. So we are saying that this is really important. Okay, it's almost finishing and I, I can already see that it's completely different. And this will be very interesting to see the results. Okay, here they are. <laughs> so as I said, it's quite interesting. Uh, I don't know if it's even possible to make stuff like this, but uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's quite interesting result. And especially this one, I think this one is more down to earth, <laughs> let's say the first one but you can still refine on top of this. And also you can use your own uh, image references and try to combine them together. For example, I found this online and this one. And so let's say that I want to mix this with this. So what you can do, it's go to mini journey and just type blend. And you can blend multiple images. In this case, I'm just going to blend two and I'll just drag and drop the image one and the second one and I press enter. And so basically I didn't say anything. I'm not allowing it to be super creative because I'm using here style 50. So it will stick to what those images are. Let's see what it will create. And so here it is, super clean image. I think that indeed it's a mixture between those two images. And let's say that I really like this first one, but I want a different aspect ratio. So what I can do and actually, I'll, this time I'll let it be super creative. I'll make here 1000 and I'm going to press two times, dash two times, and then AR, so which is for aspect ratio. I want to, let's say, three by two. So now I'll have a slightly bigger image. And here's the result again. So you see that now the image is with this aspect ratio that I defined. It's a more horizontal image. I have more elements in the scene because it enlarged the image. Of course, in this, you always need to pay attention that even if you use image to actually model on top of it, it will not be 100% correct. So you need to actually think, for example, this here, probably it's the standard size of like 60 uh, centimeters in width. So you can model, from, you can use this as a reference and then model from there, all, this, all, the, all the rest of the room. So that's, that's what I recommend. And while we are here blending images, Let's try another one. So there's also this image. So it's a more classic style and with a black and white. And then there's this one that it's really busy, right? It's completely different from the first one. So I want to blend these two together and see what it will come up with. So we have the first image, the second one. Let's just see what images it will generate. So we can see on the background wall, a lot of these flower elements. And we can see the arches, these brick arches, and we have that island as well. So I think in the end, it actually did a good job of blending these two together, which were completely different. 
styles, right? So this is another thing that you can do. Anyway, you saw in the beginning of the video, the one that I did, it's this one. It has a little bit of um, stylization to the image, but that's okay. I want to show you my process. And what I do initially, I add the image as a background reference. Pretty sure you can do this in every modeling software. And then you can model on top, on top of it. Uh, what I do, I set up these lines. So these lines will help me to get the perspective right. And then this one here in the middle, I said that this is 90 centimeters because it's a typical uh, height of a, of a kitchen current top. Based on this, everything else will be with the correct dimensions. And then when I do that, so I create a new plane just with 90 centimeters by 90 centimeters. It's fine. Actually by 60 centimeters, because I think this is 60 centimeters. It looks too small because it's just taking into account this camera. So I need to move it closer to the camera, move it higher, this. And so this is probably the right position here. And then I'll start to model from here my uh, main scene. Just a simple block out for now. I don't want to do things super detailed for now because I just want to have uh, an idea if this design would work. So I just started doing something like this and then for example, I just copy and paste this one, move it to the back and just try to see this part, move it here, you know, something like this. So I'll start to do this simple, simple block out and then I'll take this image, the final one to Lumion and I would see if this actually works, if I'm getting everything right. And just after that, I'll start detailing and get something that looks that like something like this so again i modeled let me hide this i modeled just the areas of interest here i don't uh, need to render anything so i didn't model and let me just hide this as well and so here you can see that this is my main base model i also modeled the window here because uh, in our reference as you can see we can see that there's light coming from the left side so we do need a window there and so this is my base model okay for example this table just the, the top part of the table comes from mega scans and i just removed the legs and created my new one legs okay for this for this table then everything else was done in lumion so inside lumion what i do is create a new project and i create by start by this plane environment so after importing the model like this i move it a little bit higher because i want to create some terrain around it so I need to move it a little bit higher. And so when you go inside this, the first thing I like to do here, even though I'm going to use the ray tracing here, I like to add a reflection probe because this way, when I'm setting up the materials, they will be all correct. They will not be reflecting. You see, it's reflecting the sky. I don't want that. I want to be able to reflect all the interior here so I can easily see how my material is looking. Anyway, so now if we see on that image, we see that it has some trees, it has some, uh, the ocean or a lake there, you know, so how we can do this? In Lumion, it's quite easy. We just go to landscape here on the bottom and you'll see height here. So we can increase here the brush size. And I'm simply going to drag a little bit of these areas here. Okay, just a little bit. And then I'll check here how it looks okay and actually the first thing I'm going to add ocean so on the ocean just turn it on okay and then you can increase here with intensity so I'm gonna reduce with intensity can water level make it higher so let's make it uh, about uh, here I think it's fine this level actually even higher Okay, and so now if we go here, we see that we see the ocean, we don't see that area. So we need to go back to the height and start controlling a little bit better where we want to define our area. So I start adding these areas like this a little bit. I just want to focus on this specific area. I don't need to model much more. 
so let's see so if i were to take a render like this i see that i can still raise just a little bit more and reduce here this brush size and just add a little bit here kind of like a small peninsula here and smooth on this area yeah i think something like this would work so now you need to populate this area or actually I want a more winter scene, so the first thing I'm going to do here is to go to Terrain, again, and we have here Paint. So, we have this painted right now, we're going to click here, and I'm going to select this one. So it's a more grey scene, and now I'm actually going to increase the tile size, like this, it's fine. And now Lumion has a lot of elements from trees, rocks, vegetation assets of plants, small grass, so they have a huge selection. And what we're going to do is go to here, Nature, and the first thing is that we have here a section called uh, Leafless Trees. We click here, and I'm just going to quickly place a lot of this. You can use, for example, cluster placement, mass placement. So mass placement, I can even decrease here the this. And if I click, it will start adding all of these elements here. But I don't want that. I prefer to use, for example, a mass placement, this line. I can define exactly where I want these elements. I just press Ctrl to add more points. And something like this, it's fine. I increase the number of elements and randomize all of these properties. Press OK. And then I'll start to add a new one. Actually, it's a line that I want. Okay, and I can add one more line. This time I'm going to add a, not another element, which is uh, this one here. So I click here and click add, and then I click here and click add. So we have more elements here to form our variation. Okay, I'm going to increase here the spacing and the offset too. Okay, and I'm going to increase the number of items. So, and now I will select all of them by select just one here and then click here on the third icon, select all identical objects and then select all in the same category. Okay, what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to say that place on landscape, be sure that they are on landscape. I can click confirm to landscape so they will take into account all the different slopes of the landscape and I'm going to click randomize rotation and randomize size and now I'm going just to press L and scale them down a little bit. Oops, go back so I can select all of them. Well, actually I can scale them all here, a little bit, and I'm going to press M and move them down just a little bit. Okay, so let's go back here. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. And then we have uh, some trees here, so we can also go to this tab, and we have a lot of this uh, assets every time you see this number on the bottom it means that there are a collection of them so i'll select this first no actually this one and just place it here now if i go back here i can check how does it look or better i can go to the render and for this scene i think I'd, we use a 24 millimeter cam and i'm gonna make the spec ratio 3 by 2 and make it vertical okay and now I just select actually not 3 by 2 I'm gonna add 5 by 4 so I'll have, I have a little bit more room on the sides and something like this it's fine and then I just press here on the bottom to start the camera okay you can already at this point if you want you can add the ray tracing you can already see how the image looks immediately it looks quite nice and realistic even though it doesn't have any textures but the lighting itself is quite realistic that's what i meant and uh, this especially this area on the background looks very very good the the ocean and you can click here build with effects of course you will see this with a little bit of noise lumin is still at this point working actively to reduce the noise when you are working with effects like this so it will get better and so let's hope that they will release this soon but anyway, for these things, you can actually work well here. I'm just going to select this tree. 
and go back here to my view and I'll just move this tree a little bit more like this and then while you are here you can actually duplicate by holding alt and move it and to create some variation you can just move this tree up for example move this tree a little further and then you can uh, for example rotate the tree a little bit different you can even rotate it more like that and actually move it a little bit more out of the way okay something like that so we're fine and then this was not in the actual reference but i really like to add this type of elements and you go to objects and lighting and you'll find here collection of lamp posts i'm going to select the first one and i'll just add one here so it will look more like a sidewalk so if you check this view you can actually just select and move it up and out of that part of the frame so something like that this tells us that the our house our it's a, the level of, of this interior it's a little bit higher than the ground and suggests that we are in an area that has like a, a passage for uh, people to walk by next to the, to the to the sea it's nice to add this type of elements to create a story you know the lighting on ours comes from this side the left right so we need to add here a sun effect and with the sun effect we can see the sun height and sun heading we can rotate see like this and we already have the light on this side now we need to adjust the heading a little bit so we have the same type of light as we see here okay so let's go back so i would say something like this we need to adjust again the heading and maybe something like this it will work fine I think it matters more or less the, the reference and then what I'd like to do to add a little bit more interest is to actually add on this side for example let's add this tree it has a lot of branches you can add it here and then scale it down a little bit like so let's see okay so you can adjust this for example I don't like so much on this area so sorry what you can do is build with effects again and select that tree which is here and you can strategically place this tree to just show on the bottom for example i like to add some variation here so again this creates more context on your scene it's not just about having the interior itself you can also think of the exterior right and now our exterior area here looks a little bit dull but we are still working on this actually to fix that what we can do is add the uh, sky and clouds and this kind of clouds effect you can adjust here the how much clouds you want on your sky low clouds you know if you want more high clouds in the sky so you can control all of this independently you can control the sky brightness here so more brightness see it already changed completely that spot it looks much better but here's a little trick for you and really pay attention to this you see this line here looks way way too sharp how can we fix this very easy just go to add effect and type here fog so add one fog here and now we go here to brightness and increase the brightness like so and the intensity and the fall off we can decrease because we just want that uh, uh, fog close to the horizon right so leave it about here and increase again the brightness so now you see that this line it's much more faded right looks much more realistic if i were to disable this fog and now enable it back you can see a huge difference so always pay attention to these details now another effect that i use all the time it's the color correction and uh, i like to disable the auto exposure and now i can control independently here the exposure so add more or less you know so something like this will be fine then you can control here the color temperature if you want a warmer scene probably you would increase the color temperature you know 
You have to pay attention to all of this. You can add more or less contrast depending on the type of scene you are doing. For example, mine is a more desaturated scene, so I don't want to have like a lot of contrast, right? I think that 100% it's fine here. And so you can already see how this scene is actually turning out really, really close to this one. Of course, you can also find other trees and start uh, ones, ones that had leaves and start really improving on this. And I like this scene because it has a lot of, uh, it looks with a lot of character, like actually people live here, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. And this latest release of Lumion, they did release a lot of uh, assets that are kitchen related, especially. So I think it was a perfect opportunity to actually make something like this and use all of those assets. But first, I want to show you that if you go to Microsoft Store, there's an application called Power Tools. And this Power Tools, it's a set of small applications for Windows. Sorry, it was Power Toys. That's the correct name. And so what you can do here is that, for example, you can color pick any color on the screen. You can even copy text. So it's quite useful for even for images. So there's a lot of stuff going on. I recommend you to just try it out and see for yourself. And what I do here is that I just use the color one and I pick the color from here. And actually, let me show you here on this side. So I pick this color, then I click here. I'll pick this color, then I'll pick this one. Let's say this one and this one. So I think it's enough. And what I'll do is I'll copy this color here, color code, go to Lumion, select the material and paste the color. I'll select another one and I'll just move this out of the way so it's faster. But I'll select the other one, so this floor color, paste it. Then these cabinets. So now I'll go back to here. And now I can start immediately to see how this turns out, you know, if this really would work. Because this way now, all the colors are actually bouncing and they are painting everything around. So the ceiling here, if you notice, it's being painted by this orange color. Before you go and add a lot of textures to, the, to your scene, it's important to do this simple exercise. Just add simple colors and see if this will work, you know? And this will actually save you a lot of time. So there you have it, another tip. And so now this video is already getting super long, so I don't want to be like a full tutorial, but I want to show you that with the um, Lumion, you have here uh, objects and you can just type L23 and this L23 will just show you the items that are for the new Lumion 2023. And if you press dot two, it's for this specific update, the latest one, 2023.2. So you see that there's a lot of stuff going on here. So I'm just going to select this one and actually I might disable the auto snapping. And you can see that you can change the color for these uh, items that are inside. So let's pretend there are some beans. This one can be some pasta. So I'm just quickly adding items like this and filling the scene, you know. There's also other items interesting, quite interesting here, like these uh, tables, for example. You can add one and then there's already another one that is a little bit smaller. So it's quite nice. You can add it here. And you have as well these things here. So I think this one is too big. Maybe this one. So you can add one here. So you can really start building the scene like this. For example, you can even use these ones. Let's say I like to use these ones, but I really cannot put here inside, right? So what I can do is just drop it there, scale it. And now move it inside can even scale it a little bit lower and something like this. So it's not be too noticeable that it's a shelf within a shelf. <laughs> so yeah, so you can start doing things like this. Another thing is that when you add balls, for example, there's, there was in the scene a lot of balls here on the top. Let's try to find what we can add there. So these plates can add them here. And I think they are white, completely white. So don't use completely white. There's nothing like that in the real world. So I'm just gonna make it like a dark brown color, something like that. 
you can really turn this scene to life with all of these elements start adding a lot of them to really make this scene come alive you know and there's also things like uh, cooktop for example you'll find here yeah cooktops so we can add for example this one or maybe this one yeah on this area let's say so and there you have it already a cooktop there <laughs> so another thing that, that you can use here I'm not gonna go now too much on all the objects that you can add I'll show you my finished scene soon so you can see what I did but you can also search specifically for chairs for example and you have a big sele selection of chairs that you can use because you see we have here two chairs right and then you have a table but I don't think a table makes too much sense here because I think it looks like more like a corridor behind so you can select any chair and just add them here you know give it a little bit of rotation so it looks like actually someone it's it's using them there's stuff that you should always add electronics you will find the switches and the sockets so all of this give more realism to your scene a couple of them here and there and so if i were to render this image as it is right now i'm not going to even add more samples to this ray tracing i just wanted to show how fast it is with these 16 samples and actually how good it looks so it took two seconds <laughs> to render this image and you can see it already looks quite nice with all of these uh, elements here and so now i just want to show you that uh, this is my finished scene and to be faster i think it's better to just show you what i did and one important element is that if you notice in this scene there's a lot of uh, elements that look a little bit de decayed right and what i did to achieve this it's just adding some decals so you can go here to effects and you'll find here decals okay so you can simply add any decal let's say like this of course i'm exaggerating now <laughs> and you can simply change the color by clicking here you can make a, a color that matches better that uh, background so for example this and then you can click blend colors so this will remove the, the texture from uh, from that so you can reduce a little bit and then just play around with these settings until you have a nice result i added here but i also added on the floor i have this decal here that looks more like this is an area that already got some stains because it's a, a wet area on this wall a lot of decals here i have some rust here because you can see that this material has some elements here right so i try to achieve with some decals the same effect here on this wall there's also this one that will just give some damage to the wall already some variation especially here on the top you have these dirt ones you know all of this you have one here behind that will give some nice highlights like the frame was already positioned for many years in a different place and it was just moved okay and uh, here on the bottom here some peeled paint uh, all of these elements will give more realism to your scene especially to a scene like this it's not like a brand new apartment that just went on sale right so you want to give some character to it and you are able to tell a story i had a cell phone here i had here uh, some books because it's an area where you have someone probably sitting here so they had like this rug probably with the light here on the window they are reading the books here so you know and you have here on the bottom a radio so all of these elements will help you to tell a story you know and you can see here already what i did so i added a lot of elements or objects from the lumion library and the materials as well most of them are from lumion for example this one i didn't change much i just changed the color so if i were to change this to 100 it's how it comes from lumion when you apply this uh, uh, it's rust metal i think and i just reduced a little bit to see 70 percent and i added this color i think it will match better the reference here for example this car car top it's a concrete texture i really like this texture and then this material it's from lumion 2023.2 i think it's one of the new ones only this floor it's from uh, textures.com okay it's a nice floor i think it's a uh, looks quite old and with a lot of wear so it matches perfectly the scene this is from megascans this table this is uh, just a black material and yeah you can see that everything else is quite simple and then i just try to match the best the light i could 
You already saw what I did. I added just some chromatic aberrations. There's the sky and clouds. I already showed you the, the fog trick. So, and then the result looked like this. Okay, so it was pretty similar already to my, to my reference. Then in, in Photoshop, I just did some small adjustments to kind of match the same style here from this reference. And again, when I mentioned about AI, you cannot make different views from the same uh, image. So, but here you can, and it's quite easy. I just go to another one. And let's say that now I want to take a shot of, with a different camera lens even, of this table. I can do that. I can easily do that. Can adjust some settings here differently. If I were to have different lighting, I can also do that super fast without changing to a new image. So let's say that I, I don't want the sun to be in this position. I want the sun to be from this direction or even, you know, entering the room. And by the way, when the sun is entering the room like this, you can do animation here. So let's say that I click here and I go to movie. I'll create a new camera. So I'll just create five by four, the same thing. I'll add the camera keyframe and I'll just move my camera forward. Simple animation and paste. So now this is my animation, okay? And by the way, I have my new Lumion course dedicated only for the new Lumion 2023. If you want to know more information about it, I'll leave a link in the description below. And let me know in the comments how you are using these AI tools in your own projects, in your own workflow. And I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one.